All right. Welcome back, school hoppers. Uh, so we are graced yet again with friend of the show, Dustin Baker. Dustin, thanks for coming on again. Hell yeah, man. We're less than 10 weeks away from the regular season. It's and coming I know, up. Yeah, I know we're, we're at we're at the, uh, I guess, the tail end of the dry spot in the off season. I always consider the 4th of July a symbolic turning of the page to when kind of the NFL sites start to put out their 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 content for fantasy. So uh, as of Friday, at least, that's that's when I emotionally am like, all right, this is football season from a writing yeah. perspective. Yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Especially with, like, I mean, what, the only sport that's really on is baseball. And- yeah, I like tennis, so Wimbledon's oh, going on, but okay. baseball, yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Evan's brother-in-law is a tennis coach in college. Oh, so sweet. Kind of okay, right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess the WNBA is kind of taking yeah. a high rise right now too. So if you're interested, Hell yeah, we're we're Iowa boys, so we we've always we've been following the Caitlin Clark train for a couple seasons now. But right, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been exciting. But we're not here to talk about women's basketball. We're here to talk about the Vikings. Um, and because uh, Dustin has graced us with his presence again. Again, we always love it. Thanks again for coming on. Absolutely. I threw some questions at you earlier. Um, and then we'll kind of roll you into a segment we've had going uh, the last few weeks and that we'll have going, I think, after this episode, Evan, what do we got? One more after this episode of the Jersey number? Yeah, you got the easy one coming up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the Jersey number is in a lot of the 30s and some of the 40s. That was a pretty dry area. Okay. Uh, even even the 50s, like to go back, and especially for Evan and I, we're um, or in the age where the best players to wear a lot of those jersey numbers were in like mm-hmm. the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Really, even you, Dustin, you weren't watching in the 60s and 70s either. <laughs> like, <laughs> none of us really, we saw, we, we saw names that we've never seen before in some of those 30s and 40s and stuff. So it's a good, it's a fun topic, though. We, we've been having fun with it. I love All right. It. So we'll, we'll just dive in. So we got Summer Olympics coming up. Um, mm mm-hmm. And it's not going to be in this Summer Olympics, but flag football sounds like in 2028 is going to be in the Summer Olympics, the next one, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's probably the most – I'm not an Olympics guy. I don't usually watch much, but I'll definitely be watching that. However, I wanted to get your thoughts. If flag football was in the Olympics this year, who, which Viking would be on the team? Because it sounds like NFL players are probably going to have a shot to be on that team. Yeah, so the way that I construed this topic is aside from the usual suspects. I think football is football no matter what. So if you were (laughs) going to construct a team um, and, you know, Jefferson wanted to play, of course, you would grab Jefferson and probably Darisol, although I don't know how applicable it is for a a tackle in flag football. (laughs) So I, I, I wanted to look at this from a different angle. And because I'm a novice at flag football, uh, I looked at speed. So I would take some of the guys that are on the naughty list right now for the Vikings <laughs> and transplant them to the flag football Vikings Olympics. So right out of the gate, that would be Jalen Naylor. Not that he's really on a naughty list. It's just that we don't know if he's going to win WR3. Uh, I had a show last night on my YouTube show, Vikes Now. My guest, Sean Kenner, claims Jalen Naylor is going to be outright cut. That's what the whole episode was about. That's his hot take. But I wouldn't do that for these purposes, nor would I probably cut him for the regular season. Uh, Jalen Naylor uh, is built. His reputation is built upon speed. Um, when he first got drafted, I talked to him on a different show with Bryant McKinney, and he was a real cool dude, and he even touted his speed. That's what he's known for. So I'd be sure to make him the WR2 on my flag football team. Louis Seen, uh, he is an athletic animal, and uh, we're low on him right now because the Vikings probably won't keep seven safeties. He didn't play much last year, and then he had the injury in his rookie year. But if we're going to play flag football, I want a, uh, a mean guy like that who's also really fast for a safety. And then if we are going to get really sexy with the flag football bit, I would take Ty Chandler over Aaron Jones because of, you guessed it, speed. <laughs> uh, Ty Chandler is one thing Vikings fans don't talk about enough because he's just recently risen to semi-prominence. It's Ty Chandler is fast as hell. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we're just so used to him being better than Alexander Madison that we're like, yeah, let's keep him. He's also really fast, so... In the off chance that Aaron Jones gets hurt and we have to showcase Chandler as an RB1, uh, the guy has the speed. And so on the Olympic flag football, give me Chandler certainly over Aaron Jones because Jones is about to hit the the dreaded age of 30 in December. 
Yeah, yeah. Jones will not be playing age when, <laughs> in 2028 when the next Summer Olympics comes around. Evan, do, do you have any any guys you can think of off the top of your head that might be on would be on the team if it was this year? Um, I'm definitely on board with speed. I think prioritizing speed in flag football. I like uh, Brandon Powell maybe because he's mm-hmm. small. I think uh, a smaller, shiftier player. Uh, might be really beneficial. You can kind of be more elusive that way, get away from people trying to grab the flags and make the tackles that way. So, yeah, he'd be another one that I'd add to the list. Did we forget any? Uh, Well, so I was going to go a little little outside the box. I think um, a guy, if we're just looking at Vikings, I think Nick Mullins would be pretty fun to watch because he can really (laughs) – I mean, he's a gunslinger, you know. He can shift around. Don't have to worry about too much getting tackled. It would just be ripping the flag off. But he, he, he was the guy. Dustin, you said it before. If it's third and twenty, yeah, and if Nick Mullins is back there, you know, you got a good chance. He's gonna. Oh yeah, have no fear what the, at all. <laughs> so I feel like these receivers too would be pretty, pretty fearless. So if you got Justin Jefferson out there, who's already going to jump up a thousand yards in the air and catch any ball that's around him, I mean, Nick Mullins. There would be other better quarterbacks in the league, but if we're just looking at Vikings right now, he he kind of be fun because you know just that gunslinger mindset. Yeah, and you could uh, he could, he could be one. Like, it almost feels like you'd have an expansion draft type of thing, and we yeah. really wouldn't care if Nick Mullins was to go play flag football. Whereas oh, everybody yeah. else, we're like, don't do anything stupid and get hurt. <laughs> uh, the, the other the other two guys, speed merchants. Uh, while we're on the topic, uh, really quietly, Lucky Jackson is faster than Cheetah too. Uh, leading up to his. I guess out of college, I don't know if he technically would say lead up to his draft because he was undrafted. In 2020, he ran a 4.36, um, and so his speed isn't appreciated by fans. And then Kane and Wangwu, if there's a kick oh, yeah. turner in flag football, you got to have him on the team. So that's my basically the all speed team is mine. Nice. All right. So the last couple of days, really, I think yesterday and since this uh, high quality workout video came out in the last week or so, um, Vikings fans have had a lot of fun with like, oh. What if uh, what if Thielen came back to the team? Mm-hmm. What if we got him back from the the Panthers? It's crazy. It, it it won't happen, right? But how how realistic is that idea? Is it a is it a one that'll never happen, or a ten like oh, we should be pulling out the nineteens again? What do you think, Dustin? Oh uh, no, it's certainly not a like. So there's a lot of theories that circulate Vikings Twitter and the Vikings social media orbit in general that were like, really, you're talking about that? And I'm the first to say, let's be serious, people. Uh, No, I don't think this one is ridiculous, but I also don't think it's imminent or there's really any plan. Um, The Adam Thielen thing is intriguing because let's face it, if you followed any Vikings content in the last two weeks, it seems like he's still on the team. Yeah. Like he, he feels exactly like a player who's on the team because he's throwing with the rookie quarterback. He's going on K-Fan with PA. He's talking about how great McCarthy is. It feels like he has never left. Uh, so I think that is the intriguing part that says, you know, this is kind of weird. Is, is he trying to hint at something? Well, no, you can't flirt with another team while you're on another d- different team. Um, hmm. But the reason that I won't rule this one out is there's a couple reasons for it. In, in my opinion, they're decent reasons. Uh, so... The Panthers, last year, Adam Thielen was their WR1, their bell cow, because the only thing they really had otherwise that was established was DJ Chark, and he's pretty mid. Uh, But now they got Deontay Johnson, and at this point in Deontay Johnson's career, he's better and more prolific than Thielen currently is. Maybe not when we compare careers in 10, 12 years, but he is a better asset right now. And then they drafted Xavier Leggett, or Leggetti, however you say his last name, so there are two new wide receivers for the Panthers on top of what could be considered already a little crowded with Jonathan Mingo, Terrace Marshall, Amir Smith-Marset plays there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last year, Thielen could waltz onto that team, go 3-14 and 14 or whatever they finished, and still get his first 1,000-yard season since 2018. Now, however, they've, they've beefed up the arsenal like they probably should have done last year. Mm-hmm. Therefore... Because Thielen is about to be 34 years old, he's more expendable now than he was last year. Uh, you would like right now; it's probably perfect for him to be the Panthers' WR three behind the upside of Leggett or Leggetti, and then Deontay Johnson, who should be the WR one. So there is a chance that somebody like Mingo looks great in the summer, or the Panthers realize the why do we have this guy who's 34? In that in that sense. They'd have to eat about eight, nine million bucks, but they could move on from from him, you know, in late August. 
and I would I would bet money the Vikings would pounce if that would happen because he's the hometown kid, <laughs> and we think the team needs a WR3. Uh, the other reason is because we need a WR3, or at least that's the perception among fans because we have the big mystery about who's it going to be. Um, he's really gettable. Let's say the Panthers have done everything I just said and want to go younger um, and think that they have better options. Adam Thielen shouldn't be hard to get via trade if the Vikings get into the first week of August and think, shit, we, we forgot about WR3 this whole oh, offseason, no. boys. Yeah, what are we going to do? You can get Thielen for a conditional sixth rounder or so uh, because his contract's a little bloated for somebody that old. And then, you know, he's just going to continue to get older, obviously. So you balance the Vikings' lack of draft capital for trades, plus possibly needing a WR3, which they have a perceived weakness, and then the hometown angle that says, hey, you played for the Vikings for almost a decade. Why don't you come back? All of those figures, like, to me, coagulate to say it's not unheard of that Thielen will be back. And then finally, as a tidbit, let's say we're this is all just cockamamie. It's not going to happen. The Panthers can easily move on from Thielen at the end of this year. And then if, if Thielen wanted to come back at age 35 and be the WR4, WR3, depending on how he does this year, it would be very easy to obtain him next offseason. Yeah. It's funny. You just basically summarized uh, one of your recent Vikings territory. Oh, did I? <laughs> Weird how that goes, huh? <laughs> it's Reddit today. Yeah. Uh, I highly encourage our listeners to go check <laughs> Vikings territory. I think we send... Uh, we we say it a lot. I don't know how many skull hoppers we send your way, but uh, well, thank you, Vikings territory. That one was a good article. There's a ton more, so it's funny to hear you. You obviously feel <laughs> you you believe the words you're typing out because you just said <laughs> said well, this this one again. It just it, it's it's the big part of the WR three. Like if they had. It, basically, if they, if they, even if they had like Javon Baker, the rookie on the Patriots, if they had a guy like that, I'd be like, nah, you don't want to go to a 34-year-old when you got the guy you already drafted. But mm-hmm. They just don't have anybody unless Brandon Powell is the real deal. And then there's just this sneaking suspension that before it's all said and done, Thielen's probably going to come back, whether it's for a final season or one of those one-day contracts. And if he's going to be orphaned, it makes all the sense in the world to go to the team that needs a WR3 and with the guy who happens to love the rookie quarterback already. Yeah. Evan, purely from a fan, from a heart stance, what would what would you want? Are you ready just to see what we've got in uh, Deshaun Jones and Brandon Powell and Jalen Naylor? Or would you be like, all right, come, up, come back, Adam. You're my only Vikings jersey. I, I need to root for you again. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, yeah, you're really tugging on my heartstrings there. Um you bought that jersey for me um, <laughs> because you knew that I had said, and I think I had said on the podcast at some point that if I wanted to get a jersey, that would be one of the ones that I would consider just because Adam Thielen's been just a staple in the Vikings franchise for most of my adult fanhood. Um, I mean, I would definitely be excited if he came back. Um, that would be, I think there would be, there would be some mixed feelings among the general fan base um but i think all in all he'd be welcomed back um i think a lot of people would say yeah uh, it'd be great if he could retire as a viking um i think he's done quite a bit for the organization and for the community of the twin cities Uh, i think he's just generally pretty well liked and respected i don't think there would be a lot of negative emotions with that um but uh, the the age is certainly a factor in terms of what you can do on the field. And um, yeah, he had a pretty decent season last year, but there wasn't much happening in Carolina to speak <laughs> of anyways. So um, I don't know. It would be interesting. I don't, I don't know that he fits that wide receiver three need that the Vikings currently have. Um, I think he'd be kind of a fringe player at best to fill that role, maybe more of a wide receiver four. Okay. Yeah, the the reason that the divorce happened in general after the 2022 season is because the Vikings, in my opinion, no longer deemed him worthy of WR2. And mm-hmm. then bada bing, a couple of months later, about six weeks later, they drafted Jordan Addison. There you go. You have your WR2. So it wasn't a messy split. It was just that, hey, we don't want to pay you this much money. A and B, we don't think that you should be WR2 anymore. Well, that awkward conversation is done. Um, so if, if the Vikings think that he can do a bang up job of WR3, 
Uh, there's just a lot of boxes that are easily checked that I can't rule this one out. Yeah. If it were Madden, uh, he would already be on the team. On, on <laughs> <laughs> you probably would have got a better free agent or drafted a guy. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Yeah. Well, speaking of incoming free agents, the Vikings signed Andrew Van Ginkle, right? That's his first name. I'm yep. suddenly terrified that I got his first name wrong. How did you get another Iowa guy wrong? <laughs> I know. He's uh, <laughs> that's he's from the other side of the state. The, yeah, the Rock Rapids. Side of the state right now. <laughs> Closer to me. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. We were going to ask if you if you guys have been getting a lot of flooding. In your oh, way. yeah. My basement was inundated about a week and a half ago. Oh, so, no. Yeah, it really Worse. sucks. Mm-hmm. Oh. Man, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyways, Andrew Van Ginkle, um, another Vikings territory article I read today. Sweet. Uh, uh, kind of talked about um, how it's kind of really good that we ended up with Dallas Turner, not just because, you know, he's Dallas Turner. He's a good rookie, good player, but he's going to be needed probably. It looks like he's going to be needed a lot earlier than we expected just because Van Ginkle, a Flores guy, um, uh you know, probably B plus level type free agent, good guy. Uh, he's injured, and we're not really too sure when he's going to be coming in. Is he already kind of entering the free agent bust category before they even you know suit up for training camp? Well, I'll say because we even have this question, you can tell we have deep scars from Marcus <laughs> Davenport. That's for damn oh. sure. Uh, no, he's not. So we, I think what we realized is why we got him on the affordable deal that we did. Because uh, he basically, if he's going to have an injury plagued off season or a wait and see, it explains why you could get a starting caliber edge rusher for two years and twenty million. That's that's pretty cheap these days. So I I think that is the first little hint that I remember when I saw that deal. I, might, I think I might even said on this show that was like my favorite move of the off season because it was an affordable deal for a starting edge rusher. Uh, and then to your point here, getting Dallas Turner, Van Ginkle turned into gravy. Um, no, I, I I there's I guess there's a path for him to be like Marcus Davenport, but that would really be an indictment on the front office if they swung and missed two years in a row on their their free agent edge plan but no van ginkle is really good i don't know if you've peeped his pff scores last year it was like otherworldly we talk about like olympians he had like an olympic score of like 92 or some pff grade like that uh but yeah he was hurt down the stretch like almost every dolphins edge rusher i don't know if you remember that before the playoff game they were signing like guys who were good in 2014 to play edge rusher. I think it was like Justin <laughs> Houston or those types of maybe Melvin Ingram, whoever it was, they were getting uh, relics off the street. So yeah, it's the Liz Frank injury. Yeah, It's an eye roll. Uh, I think just right now. And because of our recent paranoia about an injury permeating the season or Davenport, just not coming back from an ankle strain we're, we tend Either to be a little there too. Yeah, we tend to be a little more fragile at this point on the calendar. But here is the the unsung part of the offseason that doesn't get touted enough, and I'm going to continue to do it on whatever shows that I'm on. We went from like March 15th or 16th thinking the Daniel Hunter is gone. Well, you know, before that, they signed Jonathan Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle. Then, by the way, they drafted Dallas Turner. They also still have Patrick Jones on the roster. They signed Jihad Ward. Andre Carter was last year's UDFA guy. And then this year's UDFA guy is Gabriel Murphy. That's like seven humans that have a case to play on Sundays and or to make the active roster. So for the first time in about a decade, for the first time since Daniel Hunter started to get good, whenever your perception of that is, probably 2015, the Vikings have a lot of edge rushing depth. So, uh... I would love for Van Ginkle for this thing just to be a nothing burger. And then by the preseason, we're like, yeah, remember when we were paranoid that he wasn't going to play? But if he has to miss time, for once, the Vikings have a lot of options at edge rusher. It's not just Daniel Hunter and then somebody else like DJ Wanham, and then you're down to nubbins. It's a lot of guys that you can plug and play. And it's so much so that I think there's going to be some awkward roster cuts because you can't <laughs> keep seven edge rushers i don't think so that means either patrick jones got to go andre carter's got to go to the practice squad jihad ward was a really quick one and done or like 0.02 and done uh (laughs) there's a lot of edge rushers on this team and that's a good problem to have you think that that crowded room would kind of affect a decision on maybe like putting him on the pup list van ginkle even though maybe he's probably looking at three let's say he was looking at two three four weeks um, but maybe they'd edge towards putting him on the pup list just to get that roster spot, even though it would mean Van Ginkle would be out at, what, a guaranteed theoretical six weeks, um, 
just to kind of make prolong that awkward decision on who to get rid of and who you get to keep. Yeah, I see that as a viable option. I'm not willing to predict it as outcome yet because uh, a Liz Frank injury and Hawkinson's torn ACL are two different items. Like, I understand why yeah. Hawkinson won't be back right away. The Liz Frank thing is usually takes a little less, uh, so I'm not really that pessimistic. But in, in defense of uh, what you just stated, the Vikings under this regime now have a documented track record of being very cautious with injuries. I don't know if you remember, was it 2021 when Adam Thielen got hurt and then he came back for a game and it was very evident that he shouldn't be playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how the trainers cleared him. We don't have that shit anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the other end of the spectrum where it takes Justin Jefferson seven weeks to recover from, from something that sounded like he was good to go after about a month. They're ultra cautious. So in that vein, I can see, yeah, you might as well throw him on the pup because we already got Jod War. We got Gabriel Murphy. That can work. Um, but I don't think it's that that dire. I don't think Quasi Adafa and in back-to-back -back off seasons would make the same mistake twice by getting into bed with a guy with injury. I mean, Van Eagle doesn't have like a long injury history. It's yeah. just this this one with the Dolphins. So yeah, the pup list is in play. But it's not quite as ironclad as we we think Hawkinson is. All right. Well, we'll hold that to you. Uh, hold you to that. Yeah, I'll do some homework before next month. I'll talk <laughs> to a couple of my people and see what they say. <laughs> Sounds good. I got a, a quick interjection here because you wrote another article while we're just kind of just riffing off of all the things you've written and published today. Yeah. Um, you wrote another article about um, Aaron Jones possibly being this bust potential. Um, Who's more likely to be in that category? Are we looking, you know, in a couple of months down the road from now, Van Ginkle or Aaron Jones? Who's who's more likely to end up in that category, do you think, at this point? Um, let's see. Van Ginkle, I think, just turned twenty nine like yesterday. Mm. It was his birthday yesterday. So an edge rusher or maybe it's twenty eight, I have to look it up real quick. An edge rusher speak. That isn't very old, so you can't quite assign the he's 29. Yep, you can't quite assign the injury or the age-related fears to Van Ginkel. Uh, that article you mentioned, uh, Dave Ricard from CBS Sports did an article on fantasy busts, and Aaron Jones made made the cut because something we don't talk about very often in Vikingsville is Aaron Jones's first like part of the season, almost like first two thirds, sucked for the Packers yeah. last year. We're talking like Alexander Madison level of rushing outputs. Now, Packers fans probably don't care now, but they would have told you last year, well, he's been hurt. Wait till he gets healthy. Bada bing. He has five wonderful games to help them get to the postseason and then beat the Cowboys in the playoffs. Um, if I had to guess a, a bust, first of all, I don't think either one of them are like, you know, there's got to be one. But I would say I would agree with Dave Ricard at CBS Sports because Aaron Jones Right now, we're in the honeymoon with him, where all we think about is how good he looked in December and January. But all running backs get hurt, even ones that are like 21, and Jones is 29. So more likely to be a bust would be Aaron Jones, because running backs simply get hurt more frequently. Even when they're having a great year and they're durable guys, they're going to miss a little time. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I just don't have a lot of fear about Andrew Van Ginkle um, for the long term. Uh, we just have kind of bulked him together with TJ Hawkinson and said, Oh God, they're going to have the two long haired white guys are going to miss the start of the season. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that is a necessary fear, but if I had to choose, I would say it's more likely that Aaron Jones gets hobbled sometime early in the season. And then we'd really get an audition to see if Ty Chandler can carry the RB one load. Yeah. Yeah. To me, Aaron Jones, I mean, anything at all that he does good for the Vikings. It's just icing on the cake. I'm not a huge believer in thinking he's going to be this big contributor mm -hmm. for the Vikings. I'm not banking on it. Be just for exactly what you just said, he's going to get injured. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's going to be a 30 year old running back at one point in the season. And it's, I think it's just inevitable. He's going to get injured and 30 year old running backs, unless your name is Adrian Peterson, uh, don't produce anymore. <laughs> no. It just it, that position is so thankless a lot of times, and it gets beat down every single play, and they just they can't keep it up for year after year after year. So I I, I always say hashtag don't pay running backs. Yeah, uh, and that's I'm, why I was surprised Quazy did it. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's not a $20 million a year guy. Uh, so if he gets one hundred yard rushing game, I'll I'll be jumping for joy. <laughs> um obviously he's probably gonna do more than that, but I'm not expecting a whole ton from him. Yeah, I would I would challenge your viewers um sometime during when they're bored, go look at his game log last year. He didn't get good until Christmas Eve hmm. and then he was unbelievably blazing hot. But if you really think Vikings fans are going to have the patience until Christmas for their running back to get good, you haven't been around too many Vikings fans. Uh, so <laughs> I guess w- what we'll hope is that his shitty games were just a magical bribe byproduct of being hobbled for the whole almost whole season. And we'll hope the change of scenery is different. But I, I am very enthusiastic that he became a defector and he's on the Vikings and we have <laughs> like a two or three pronged solution to finally fix this ground game. But I am not quite like gung ho like some of the worlds on like, hey, Prime Aaron Jones is going to tear it up. That would be sweet, but I'm not banking on it. Yeah, he did look really good in that purple sombrero, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm still trying to get over that. For the first time he took his hat off, I, uh, like I, I couldn't believe that he had cornrows that started like back here. I was <laughs> like, I was like, what's going on here? Why can't he just do what I did and give it up? Uh, but yeah, that that's his jam. It looks really sweet coming out of the helmet. Uh, but yeah, when I first saw him take off his hat to put on the sombrero, I was like, well, what happened there? No, he just got a unique hairstyle. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I'm rooting for him. I'm just, yeah, me too. I'm not expecting a whole ton. Maybe it's, maybe that's my Vikings fan condition coming out in me. Like I'm just yeah. already expecting the worst. So you can't hurt me. Because <laughs> I'm already hurting myself. So go Aaron Jones, go off, have a day, have a career with the Vikings. But I just, I, I, I can't put my heart into that. I don't. I can't believe it. So, all right. Well, Evan and I, we've been going through the last few weeks, a uh, little off season series. I've said it a few times. This is a this off season is going great so far because we haven't had somebody get arrested. Uh, we haven't had anybody like the Chiefs' defensive tackle that got arrested twice within a few mm-hmm. weeks, and then they've ended up cut, cutting him. Um, this is a good time to have a no headlines for your favorite football team because nothing bad's happening. Um, so because of that, we're kind of scrounging for, for topics to have on a weekly basis. So we've been going through um, listing out each Jersey number um, uh, about what have we done about 20 per episode uh, and kind of listing the best players in Vikings history to have worn that Jersey number. So uh, this episode right now um we are going through numbers 60 through 79. So those those elite offensive linemen, mm-hmm. sprinkling a few defensive tackles in there too. Um, but Dustin, I just I'm I'm interested in that group of numbers, those 20 numbers. What are a few guys that kind of jump out to you as like, oh yeah, he was one of the best Vikings of all time. Obviously, the best one to wear whatever number. So not every number. Yeah. Uh, we're doing that separately, but but who jumps out at you? Yeah, I uh, I put some homework into this. Uh, the first one, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that belongs on this list with no, <clears throat> no debates is Randall McDaniel and number mm-hmm. 64. It's funny, I have a Randall McDaniel jersey, and I was wearing it for something, and one of my coworkers at Vikings Territory saw me in a picture, and he's like, you wearing a Blake Brandle jersey? And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. And this was last year before anything about Brandle was cool. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, Randall McDaniel... Um, if you're going to do one of those Vikings Mount, Mount, Mount Rushmore's, it's really hard to leave him off of it. And I think the only reason that he isn't basically named the greatest Viking of all time is because he plays guard. And, you know, his job is just to do this for three hours mm-hmm. every Sunday. But the Randall Daniel has more Pro Bowls than any Viking in, Viking in Vikings history. He has, that's 11 of them. And he has more all pros than any Viking in Viking history. And so if you want to base it off of longevity, longevity, health, performance, consistency, if you can get over the fact that he was just a guard, Randall McDaniel is probably the best Viking of all time if you want to compare resumes. So he for sure gets the, the nod in this spot. Ron Yari, uh, he was number 73. He uh, had seven straight Pro Bowls. So at the peak of his powers, he for sure would get the nod here. Um, and then there was another, uh, there was a, a linebacker named Roy Winston. Uh, he was number 60. He was kind of like Chad Greenway of his day. He never had the accolades that would get him to the Hall of Fame or to consistently get Pro Bowls. 
Uh, but those three guys would make my all-time list between 60 and 79. Uh, I can't go without saying Jared Allen at number 69. He would probably be, if we were doing a show of the top three guys with this jersey range, Jared mm-hmm. Allen would have to be in that three. Uh, so that's obvious for me. Uh, Gary Zimmerman, he was coming up when I was young. He he made three Pro Bowls, and he was number 65, uh, another guard. And then my guy, Bryant McKinney, one Pro Bowl. He wore number 74. And somehow, with all these guys I'm naming off, I, I got different jersey numbers. Uh, so McKinney famously solidified the left side of the line for a decade before he went to go win a Super Bowl with the Ravens. Mm-hmm. He would be up there, and I don't know that there's another better 74 than him. And then I wanted to do honorable mention on the current team with Christian Derisaw at 71 and Brian O'Neill at 75. So uh, the topic or the number range you guys assigned me was basically a bunch of offensive linemen plus uh, Prince Winston and uh, Jared Allen. But yeah, it's a real, real cool subject. Yeah, and go figure, it didn't occur to me until you said it. You actually have a working relationship with number 74, too. So that's <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brian and I, I have been doing the Believe in Vikings show now for four years. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I look back on that. I remember how new I was when I when that came together. And now I now I just cons- consider him somebody that I would text to say, hey, what's going on, buddy? Uh, that's, how, that's how far that's come. But yeah, he's a wonderful dude. And yeah, he'd have to be on there at number 74. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool. I've never heard like about him personally, like being a dude. I've never heard a bad thing about Brian. No, uh-uh. Yeah, he, he seems like one of the coolest former Vikings of all time. Well, that he has so many friends. It's it's weird because I can say, hey, like just name drop somebody on accident, and he'll be like, oh yeah, I knew of him. There was one time where, what was it? Um. I- Oh, okay. So, so I don't know if you know this, but Brian McKinney is friends with uh, Serena Williams and Venus Williams. Yeah, they're like lifelong friends from some type of connection. And a couple years ago, Brian was doing the NFL choir on America's Got Talent, and it was like a a men's choir. It was, and they actually got pretty far in that little tournament. And we were talking on the show about, you know, what are your chances of winning? And I said, uh, top of my head, I was like, you should have Serena Williams retweet the America's Got Talent thing. And I was like, wait a second. I was like, I was like, I was like, but she knows LeBron. You should have LeBron retweet it. <laughs> and he laughed and he goes, oh, I know LeBron. And oh. I was like, oh, yeah, of course you do. And I was trying to like find him a degree of separation to LeBron. He's like, no, he's like, I'm he's like, I played in Miami, man. I know LeBron. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's one of my mini Bryant McKinney stories. I think one of my favorite is, I think you even said it the first time you were on the Skull Hop, you, you were talking about Bryant McKinney and that um, you mentioned something about Randy Moss. I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of mm-hmm. cool to have Randy Moss or talk they to him. They started texting him. And he's like, yeah, he'll be on next week. Like, yeah, what? yeah. And that, that, like, I didn't know the full heft of McKinney's power at the time. I was still new and just kind of <laughs> like be on my best behavior. And yeah, I, I was like, I offhandedly, I was like, God, that'd be sweet to have him on the show sometime. And I don't think he said anything in that specific moment, but he started texting. Um, and it would almost be like me and you messaging where like, I was like, Hey, Hey, can you want to come on my show? And that's, that's how he and Moss were. And yeah, it, it lined up within two weeks and same, but you, same thing with Adrian Peterson. Uh, I think Culpepper is going to come on this summer. He just knows all those guys. And this isn't limited to the Vikings. I mean, he knows everybody from the university of Miami. He knows all <laughs> the players from the Ravens because of the Ravens days. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Well, I, I always have fun just living vicariously through you and <laughs> it's a talk to all these people. That's awesome. Uh, last thing that kind of popped into me, I mean, in my mind here really quick, as we've been doing this season, this series, um, Evan and I have noticed there's a few numbers that it's like, Hey, if you're an up and coming Viking and you really want to make your mark and maybe you don't care as much about what number you have, you just want to own a number. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to, like, if you get like two pro bowls, you'll automatically be the best at that number of all time. Yeah. Vikings. Can you can you think of any in that sixty to seventy nine group that somebody could really come in and own it? Um, and we won't hold oh, you to this because there's a chance you could say like, oh, this number, and it's like, oh, somebody from the seventies went to yeah. Uh, let's Bulls. see. <laughs> yeah, this is this is probably the most challenging one to do this because who the <laughs> hell knows what guards <laughs> number were in the nineties? Probably. <laughs> let's see. Probably seventy two. I don't know if there is a big name. I'm gonna I'm gonna 
hate this if you guys find like, oh yeah, this guy at seventy two. <laughs> I, I would get... say, <laughs> yeah, probably seventy two, and then, ooh man, six maybe sixty eight. Who had that? Anthony Herrera or somebody? Oh yeah, yeah, or sixty. <clears throat> 67's Ed Ingram. That keeps standing out in my head. No, 60. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say 72. Look that one up. I want to say a lot of the 70s are taken because of decent offensive tackles. And mm-hmm. then 68 standing out to me, but I don't know if that's for a good reason. So I'm going to bank my reputation on 72. Right. Evan, did you look it up, or are we going to have to go back and ask our stat guy if that was a good a good selection? So 72, um, just some names that stand out to me. Ezra Cleveland had that for the three years that he was with the Vikings. Um, And James White, he was prominent in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, I think I'm doing all right. (laughs) Other than that, yeah, 72 is pretty good. What was the other one, 68? Yeah, but as I said that, I started to have – like things flashed for my eyes, but it was just like jersey numbers of sixty eight. Yeah, that just, one I'm a little spooked that my I might have been forgetting somebody ginormous. <laughs> Nothing notable that stands out to me at sixty eight either. Good. So. Okay. All right. So there you go. Two numbers that if you're an up and coming Viking, either an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, I think those are about the only groups that can fully wear those numbers. Maybe Maybe linebackers in the 60s? I don't know. If you're an up-and-coming Viking and you really want to own a number, just get a couple of Pro Bowls and wear 72 or 68, and you'll be you'll be good as old there. <laughs> I almost um, – wasn't there one summer where Ever- Everson Griffin came back and he was like 50-something? We all freaked yeah. out. <laughs> Michael Pierce had come in as a free agent. He, he snagged 97, but then it was the 2020 year. And Michael Pierce sat out. Oh, um, yeah. And then – 2021 Griffin came back and Pierce technically still held 97, but yeah, uh, he just, he just gave that up. Yeah. What <laughs> was he? What was Griffin? It was a 50 something. Was it like, it was something like that for like a practice, you know, a very no, short, it was a, pre- it was a game. I remember oh, seeing in the it? game. Yeah. I remember tweeting about it. That's why. So it was, it was something he came back and it was like 50. I want to say it was a 50 cause I thought it looked kind of cool, but most yeah. of Twitter was like, Oh, I can't stand seeing this. <laughs> I want yeah. to say it was like 54 or something. Hmm. See that might have been... Because Eric Kendricks probably would have been on the team at that point, too. Yeah, it was when he came back. You remember when he went and played for the uh, well, Cowboys? He, a couple of times, right? He There's a season he started with the Cowboys and then bounced to the Lions. Maybe he only yeah. came back. Yeah, um, he only came back the once, and I think it was that time. And maybe that's why it stands out, because it was actually in a game. Um, hmm. I'll find it after the show, but it it was definitely in the fifties, and yeah, it felt weird. Yeah, yeah. Doing this series, uh, the numbers are such a kind of goofy thing because ultimately it doesn't matter. It's just what the guys do on the field. <laughs> uh, but for fans, it's like what we see. We know nineteen is cool because of Thielen. We know uh, Dante Culpepper will always be number eleven for the Vikings for me. So it is it is fun to think about. Like, oh, who wore this number? Pete Bursich, we found out, wore number fifty for one year. Um, yeah. After playing for the Vikings, leaving, then coming back. So yeah, it's it's interesting to to look at these numbers. Uh, Fifty eight. I tweeted on August twenty second or August twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. I happen to like Griffin in number 58. So in a preseason game, he was 58. Well, the school hop account, we'll go back. We'll find that tweet of yours. We'll retweet it. So <laughs> yeah, that so I hereby nominate Everson Griffin uh, as number 58. Pretty cool <laughs> in this section of the episode. <laughs> there you go. All right, Evan, you got anything else before we wrap it up? No, I, I would add one more number, and I'm sure we'll talk about this when we go through the full list, but uh, 77, Corey Stringer. Absolutely. Uh, I have a news article here that my parents clipped out of the Star Tribune. It's Randy Moss with his head like this. Uh, it's a pretty powerful uh, moment for me as a young kid to see a, a player that uh, you kind of idolize uh, pass away from something as tragic like that. So mm-hmm. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention him at that number. Um, pretty pretty prominent memory for me in my young Viking fanhood. Absolutely. Yeah, 
Yeah, shame on me for forgetting him. Um, when I was a teenager, my first job was bagging groceries in Eden Prairie at a grocery store called Driscoll's, and he used to come in. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, and he was he was just like McKinney, huge. And but he was so cool because let's see, I was about fifteen. I could go up to him because you knew him the moment you saw him. He had the, the dreads at the time that weren't crazy popular. Uh, he was huge, and he, he always had the. I don't know if you guys listened to rap back then. There was an album called Ghetto D from Master P, and he always had this huge chain on that was the album cover of Ghetto D. Uh, <laughs> and so you could go up to him and just start talking to him, like like you played football. You could be like ask him about the team, and he would talk right along with you. And so we're talking like uh, 1998, 1999 is when uh, I got to meet him. Yeah, and he was a really cool guy. So hell yeah, you got to make sure he's included in this pantheon. Yeah, that's super cool. And he might be the most recent retired number. Mm-hmm. I might be wrong on that, but they, you know, fittingly retired his yeah. number pretty soon after all that went down. But yeah. All right, Dustin. Um, once again, thank you so much for coming on. We will have we'd have you on every episode if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> but we love having you on. It's always fun. Um, but I always like to give you a chance to to talk about what you're doing, give you a, some plug time. So what can we what can we look out for you uh, as far as Dustin Baker content? Sure. Um, it is at Vikings Territory, the the show that you guys talked about at nauseum here, which was awesome. <laughs> um, and then our sister site is Purple PTSD. Recently, my good friend Yannick Eckhart took over as the editor there, and uh-huh. things have been going great for him. Uh, Vikes Now, we record during the slow season about every other day, four or five episodes a week. Um, and that's that's the major stuff. And then on Twitter, it's Dust Baker. Um, and then things from that account will really start to heat up when we have meaningful stuff happening, which is about less than three weeks away. And why don't you gentlemen, if you if you think of it, schedule me for like August 6th or so. Um, I think that would be an apropos time. I have one more vacation to take this summer, but that isn't until two days after that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll plan on it. We'll get all the details uh, nailed down for that. Outstanding. Uh, and then I th- I, I'm pretty sure Cam Akers is on the way back to the team, by the way. That's that's more than just a Charlie Walters article. That sounds like that one is imminent. So yeah. Vikings will get even deeper at running back. Yeah, I saw uh, Vikings territory something come out. I don't know if it was Twitter or just on the website, but it had sources right there. Yeah, in the yeah I went and made sure that that wasn't just something that had accidentally proliferated the internet. Uh, no, it, it, that one is imminent, and it makes all the sense in the world um, for them to have one more one more guy there, especially because they just don't use Kane and Wangu on offense. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. that'll be cool. I'm I'm excited for that. Yep. All right. Hey, welcome back. Uh, you made it through the interview. <laughs> yeah. And I, I say that like it's a bad thing, but it's never a bad thing to have a conversation with Dustin Baker. Yeah. We always enjoy it. I, w- I would talk to him kind of like you. Like there are some people that I would just sit down and just hang out all day and talk about the Vikings. And that's literally what, what this podcast started off with. Dustin's another guy. He, he knows a lot, but he doesn't come off as arrogant. Um, and it's fun to talk with them about the Vikings. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. Um, that's kind of turned into, and I'm very happy about it, like a monthly segment for him to come yeah. on. We, I, I think I tell him we'd have him on every episode. But anytime he's he wants to come on, he's welcome to. And Dustin, I love this monthly thing that we've got going on. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been fun. It was fun to kind of pick his brain on some things. We've got the Olympics coming up, so we kind of asked him, like, well, if football were a thing and flag football could become a thing uh, in the near future, you know, who would the Viking Olympians be? Mm -hmm. Um, I got to ask him an interesting question about Aaron Jones versus Van Ginkle, um, two new Vikings acquisitions in the offseason, and which one is more likely to be a bust. Mm Mm-hmm kind of coming up so and on that note too i think i was a little hard on aaron jones i i I want him to be a 2000 yard rusher i want him to to be healthy all year and i i'm be the first one to jump up for joy in his first touchdown with the vikings and every all 20 of them that i hope he gets but i just realistically i I don't see that happening but i'm i'm an aaron jones fan i'm a vikings fan he's a viking so i'll I'll be one of the first to buy a purple sombrero (laughs) well i I saw sombrero sombreros in mexico i didn't see any purple ones though Uh, so uh i didn't look too hard i probably should have looked hard enough Um, and it was fun to kind of piggyback off of our series that we've been doing mm -hmm. too and just kind of uh ask dustin 
who stands out to him in that 60 to 79 range as well. So that was it was a good conversation, as it always is. And, uh, yeah, we're always grateful and always excited to hang out with him for just a little bit. And, yeah. Yeah. Fun and that it's become a monthly thing. Yeah. I had totally forgotten that Everson Griffin had worn number 58 for the Vikings. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was fun for him to bring that yeah. up. And I forgot about that too. But and yeah. I told him I'd retweet it, but I didn't at the time. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that soon. Here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey Vikings fans, Evan here from the Skull Hop and we just wanted to say thank you again so much for listening to the Skull Hop and we also wanted to take one more opportunity to let you know that this episode of the Skull Hop has been brought to you by Big Top Ventures. If you're considering taking an all-inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica, reach out to our friends at Big Top Ventures at bigtopventuresllc at gmail.com. Once again, that's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. You can get the lowest rate possible on several all inclusive resorts throughout the region. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. And thanks again for listening to the Skull Hop. Skull.